Hi, this is Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park. Welcome to our second installment of our watercolor workshop with artist Betty Gatewood as we continue our celebration of spring wildflowers here at Shenandoah. You can illustrate your, um, your flowers any way that you want to with any kind of medium, but let me show you some ideas. I'm gonna take this and put this over there. Okay, so your materials. It's always good to have a light. And when you're doing botanical art, it's traditional for you to have the light coming from the upper left of your project. So this would be where I would be working. And here, I don't need that today. It's portable, so I can take it most anywhere if the batteries last. Um, but today, with all the extra light, I don't need that. And I am working from a photograph, so I think that's okay. Well, let's talk about how would you happen to, what would you need? And of course, you need a pencil. The other thing that you might need would be that ruler because as I said, that you wanted to be able to make sure that the flower is accurate, having all of the parts of the flower proportional to like the leaves to the petals. So any kind of ruler. And I often will go to the millimeter side Eh, the, the inches side uh, works as well, of course, but here you get a little bit more detail. The other thing that you're going to need if you're doing watercolor, and I'll come back to other options here in a minute, watercolor are some brushes. And you want to have brushes that can do things that are large surfaces if you're doing large leaves. But you also want to have some that are small, so you can do tight detail. Um, and um, then you also might want to have a pen, and it has to be a waterproof pen. And I'll show you about that uh, option a little bit later. Okay, so you need good light. Now, in order to get this image of that little bluet onto paper, um, you'll need something called tracing paper. And tracing paper is like tissue paper. Uh, it's about 25 pound, it's very crinkly. And I think, although I've never really investigated, it probably has a little bit of a waxy surface to it. And that will enable you to take, oh, I don't like that particular line. And then you can erase it and you are able to then move on. If you were working on your finished product, on finished paper, um, then that paper, after you erase over and over again, it's going to cause some texture problems to the surface, and the watercolor or the pencils really won't look as good. So you need tracing paper, brushes. Now, colored pencils. If you don't want to do watercolor, um, then you can use colored pencils. And colored pencils uh, are great because they're portable. All you need is that and a, a little um, sharpener and you're ready to go. I would still recommend that you use tracing paper so that you don't hurt the surface and want to erase it all. Another really fun thing that I like to use are called watercolor pencils. And watercolor pencils, they look the same. And the, they're sharp in the same way, but I will show you that they're almost like magic. Uh, when you're out, if I'm backpacking or hiking, and I want a real quick sketch something, and you know I don't have my water container <laughs> with me, I will use um, the watercolor pencils and my water brush that has, a wa it has water in the barrel. And so all you do is you, well, I will demo, but it has, you can see, a brush tip, and you don't have to worry about needing this. If I am inside with a, um, a place that I, I would like to have a little bit more control over, then I would have containers of water, one for uh, wetting my brush, one for cleaning my brush. Um, all right, so let me show you about some different kinds of paints, too. Okay, so you all probably are familiar with just uh, the store brand of, of watercolor paints. The thing is, it's important that you 
would, before you want to start painting, you have to do what's called prime your paints. And so that's because these are relatively dry and you wanna make sure that you have enough water in there that you are uh, kind of waking them up. So that's watercolor paints and they're very portable, very easy. So let's take a look at, um, first of all, I'm just going to show you um, with swatches what the different colors. And let's just pick blue because it's a blue sky today. I find instead of doing it like this, I have more control if I do this. So this is what the color would look like on your paper. And so let's just say that this might have been one of those petals and you'd have to you need to sketch with how the plant grows too so this is just a very quick thing but you can kind of see but then you can kind of go back with a little bit harder touch and make it a little bit more in detail so this is uh, colored pencils this is a teacher thing Okay, so then let's go and pick a watercolor pencil. And I make sure I got the right one here. So the watercolor pencil, I also hold on the side just because I can get a little bit more control and they don't have to be sharp. So I'm just kind of doing this. And here's the magic. So you got your paper towel and you got your water and it will actually bloom. The color will blend with your brush. And you can come back, but you can't come back until this dries. So that one side over there is a little bit too dark. I don't like that, that happens. So I'll try to take a little bit off and then put a little bit more on this side over here. But I gotta wait now, because if you go back in with your um, watercolor pencil while it's still wet, it just makes kind of a mess, I'll show you. See, that just doesn't look right. So sometimes you just have to Practice first and then come back. Eh. So anyway. Now the other one is working with um, your watercolors. So I'm going to make that. Okay, I should probably label this as watercolor pencils. And then this is going to be um, the watercolors. So the thing with this is that you want to have your paints prepped and also you want to make sure that the excess water doesn't drip where you don't want it to go. And first of all, I'm going to do a tiny line there and then another tiny line over here because the center has, it's, it's white there. And so then I'm gonna go up like this, and then like this. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'll show you why. Okay, so that gives me the feeling that I gotta make sure that I keep, I keep that. Now, I'm gonna take a little darker, and I'm gonna put it here, and I'll show you how to blend So using your water, you just pull it out like that. And then you can make it because the light, you know, is coming from this direction. You want this side over here to be a little darker. But you also know too that um, over here, the edge is curved. 
So you want to have it a little bit darker. And then over on the other side, or let's just say this side in the interest of time, let's say that you see kind of this part is kind of bubbling up a little bit. Well, that means that the light is hitting it. So you can come in and you can lift a little bit of the color and you have a little bit of essence of that light coming over here, not hitting this, but hitting this. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for future episodes of our watercolor workshop. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get notifications when there will be more episodes in the series on our Shenandoah National Park Spring Wildflower Celebration.